Hello. Today we are going to talk about patterns again. By this word tutorial, I feel like glorifying once again women with newspaper wise. Because it seems to me impossible to reach such a variety of patterns if you be with a real wise. Of course, I respect natural materials as well. But this very lesson is meant to show that our type of fancy work prevails weaker work in decorative opportunities. In my time, when I saw the juice packs made by Richard for the first time, I was overwhelmed. It was him who inspired me for this tutorial. And I'd like to emphasize that it is meant for the beginners, for the ones who only start mastering different techniques of weaving, like the rope and printed, printed cotton weaving. And this very lesson is devoted to the combination of the rope and printed cotton weave, and to the ways one can play with this combination. For shaping the pattern, several factors are, impo are important. First of all, it is the color of the poles. Then uh, one more factor that is not so very important, but still, the number of the poles in the bunch. Uh, here they are doubled, but there can be one separated pole as well. It is not too important, but it does add some diversity to the pattern. The second factor is the number of the poles, even or odd. Here I was working with the even number of the poles. The next factor is the color of the working tubes. At first the doubled ones we weave the printed cotton weave. They can be light or dark or even different if the tubes are doubled. And the fourth factor is the color of the tubes we weave the rope with. Notice that one row is woven with the double tubes in the technique of the printed cotton weave, and the second row is woven in the technique of the rope. Here we weave with the tubes of two colors, light and dark. This combination of light and dark ropes gives us opportunities for still more varieties. Either a light tube can lie in front of a pole or a dark one, which makes the patterns look completely different. I mean, verifying the factors I have enumerated, you can create completely different patterns. Those packs for juice from Richard have fascinated me. Besides, you can also verify the number of the working tubes in a bunch. You can use triple tubes instead of doubled one, or each tube separated. You can use four tubes. I will give you the links to the Richard's packs and you will see the way the master has played with possible varieties and what a space for imagination, creativity and invention of new varieties he has offered. Today I'd like to tell the beginners, I mean those who try thinking over possible varieties, but for whom it is still hard because they have too little experience. So I'd like to tell them how I personally was looking into the topic. I'll tell you about uh, the way I was seeking. I have tried different combinations of colors and shapes. Some of them were successful, some were not. What conclusions I have made? First of all, this pattern is more suitable for square shapes than for round ones. I have woven one more box of round shape, but it still seems to me that uh, on a square shape it looks clearer. I don't like the way this pattern is combined with other patterns. So I have concluded for myself that if we start weaving in this technique, it has to be the only pattern used in the article. Compare these two articles. Well, maybe this one has not the best color selection and the article is not completed yet. But anyway, I prefer the bags like this where we frame the white pattern with a rope. 
and a couple more words about this pattern. A variety of this pattern is very convenient for using if you have to weave a few similar articles, but it is boring or you feel like weaving articles of one and the same style, but at the same time not to repeat yourself. So this pattern is perfect for this very case. While getting prepared for the tutorial, when weaving the boxes and bags, I have made some notes on the varieties I have told you about. on the number of the poles, on different colors, and I'd like to weave uh, this box using the variety with the even number of the poles, the poles of the light color, the dark double tubes for printed cotton, and the working tubes for the rope, one dark tube and another one light. You will see everything in the process. I've been thinking over several varieties, but it is the one I've chosen. On the scheme it looks this way. Let's watch the way it is going to look in the article. So I have woven the three tube rope with the dark tubes, which will frame the pattern. The most difficult point of the whole pattern is passing from the rope to the printed cotton weave and vice versa. I have tried cotton, but it has been too long. Maybe it would be neater, but this question is still open. How to do it better? If your first priority is neatness, then probably it is worthwhile cutting and waiting for it to dry out before you continue weaving. It would be interesting to read your comments and advice, dear masters, but for myself I've chosen the variety I'm going to show you now. So, I have woven the rope with three tubes, tucked in one of the tubes downwards, and then I pass on to the printed cotton weave with the two remaining tubes. Now I'm going to lengthen them. and start weaving in the technique of the printed cotton weave. On the poles of the base, under them. A regular printed cotton weave. And this way up to the end of the row. Now look, we have woven one row and I am starting to sink. I will need, following this scheme, the pole that has turned out outside to be covered by the dark tube of the rope. That is why I am modeling the situation for myself. I am passing to the rope, I will do this way and will get the dark one next. So I have to turn the tube, which is an upper one, into light. I have to replace it with a light one. I'm going to replace it behind the pole. Let's model the situation once again. The replacement has to take place behind the pole, that is here, for the joint to be hidden. That's why I have cut the tube, lengthened it neatly. The place of lengthening will be hidden behind the poles. And weave. One, two, lengthen. Pass on to the row of the rope we have calculated. It is very important to press the weaving down with your fingers a little, because... Let me show you an example of my mistake when I was not doing it and uh, has got such gaps as a result. You see? When I have noticed them at the end, I have realized that what my mistake was about. That's why I've started doubling the tubes to get them rigid enough. 
Or you can also insert uh, skewers for barbecue here. They can help as well to keep the poles of the base from bending when pressing the work down. And this way we weave a row in the technique of the rope. So we have woven the row. Again we have two tubes in the end, a light one and a dark one. We replace them with two dark behind the pole again. And because we have the even number of the tubes, our motifs do not alternate as on a chessboard but repeat themselves one over another. A regular printed cotton weave in the same way as in the first row. We had the first row in the technique of a printed cotton, the second row in the technique of the row, the third row repeats the pattern of the first row. Let's watch the moment of passing once again. For me personally it was the most difficult point until I have learned to make it neat. Look, from two identical tubes of the printed cotton weave, in this variety of the pattern, cut the upper one to hide the joint behind the pole. And continue weaving using the technique of the rope. In the way we have calculated last time, to get the dark tube in front of the outside poles. One, two. Make sure that everything is going the way it used to and continue weaving. So we have finished the pattern framed it with a different color. In the technique of a rope, as the rule, in this case direct opposite rope, the pattern is finished. The only thing left is to weave up to the end to complete the article. But because the topic of today's lesson is a pattern, so a few more words to sum up what concerns the very pattern. What you have to pay attention to. First of all, the poles have to be rigid. Secondly, you have to press the work tie down while weaving. The third thing, the point of parsing has to be neat. We have discussed already how you can do it. Actually, these are the most essential points. One can either make mistakes or make sure to avoid them. So, thanks again to the Master Richard for his idea and his wish to look into the pattern. And once again a couple of words to sum up that the way the pattern will look depends on the color of the poles, secondly on the evenness or oddness of the poles, then the color of the doubled working tubes and the working tubes of the rope, and finally the number of the rows to be repeated. the number of the tubes in the printed cotton weave and the number of the rows repeated in the rope. So there can be multiple varieties. I wish you vivid imagination in creating new and new patterns. Good luck!